everyone. In one of the previous videos, we have discussed the neural ordinary differential equation approach as a general nonlinear model identification idea to systems where we have very limited knowledge about the structural dynamics. In this video, I would like to showcase with the Wiener Hammerstein approach an intermediate solution which will assume some structural knowledge and also some nonlinearities inside the models which are unknown to us, and therefore making it a very suitable gray box approach which combines known dynamics with unknown nonlinearities. So the Hammerstein Wiener approach is quite straightforward. We assume that we have, again, some input u which we can observe to our system, and this input is subject to some nonlinear static transformation, so that is static, no dynamics here, and from that we get a, like a U bar, like a modified U with respect to some input nonlinearity, and this U bar then goes on a dynamic system, x dot of t is a times x of t plus b times u bar of t. So that is uh, dynamic, of course, or the dynamics of the system. And the output of this, assuming that we also have an output equation, uh, which I do not go here into details, is then again going on some nonlinearity. And so that's basically x, and this would be then, let's say, x bar, which is again static. So in this case, in this Wienerstein Hammer approach, we can uh, configure two variants. The first variant would be that we just consider the input static nonlinearity with the known dynamical structure model, um, model, which would be the Hammerstein approach. Or if we consider a in linear input and a nonlinear output, that would be the Wiener model approach. What is the advantage of this approach? The advantage of this modeling approach is that I can utilize, if available, pre-knowledge about the dynamics of my systems in a linear way. So A and B are the usual state space matrices. So there I can put pre-knowledge into of my system and nonlinearities, which make the entire modeling process very hard, are put into the input space or into the output space. And this also makes it more simpler in order to get a stable system representation because we know that for the inner and external stability of the system, in particular A of course matters, so I can enforce some constraints on the identification of A or by already providing a predefined A such that the uh, inner stability of this inner model is given and therefore also the external input to output stability can be enforced and that we do not observe these wired simulation um, uh, problems or optimization problems with, which we have seen in one of the previous node videos without considering any pre-knowledge. So if we write that down, um, specifically this sketch, so how is the Hammerstein-Wiener approach uh, formally? It is x dot hat of t is a times x hat of t plus b times an f hat w with respect to u and some input u of t. So this would be here our input nonlinearity which we can represent by any function approximator, for example, an artificial neural network, but only here with respect to the input. And the output, which I have not put specifically here into this cartoonic sketch, would be y hat of t is f hat wy, so another sub-parameter set with respect to the output of x hat of t 
and uh, u bar of t. Okay? So that would be then our nonlinear output equation, which is here in this cartoonic representation, this approach. And this Wienerstein Hammer, uh, Hammerstein Wiener approach, of course, is also perfectly situated to combine this with a neural ordinary approach, because then the neural part is basically this FWY and this FWU, and we can put again everything into a node approach and then solve the entire ODE in one shot. In the rest of this video, I would like to discuss a small example based on the Hammerstein submodel, so where we only consider an input nonlinearity, and that will be the thermal behavior of a DC motor. So a very simple electric motor, DC motor temperature dynamics, and on a high-level view, the temperature dynamics uh, of a DC motor depend on the load current, I of T, so the electric current flowing into the motor, and the speed of the motor, N of T, so the rotational speed of the shaft. And these two quantities will influence the losses, so P, V of T, which we will represent by an A and N. In the following, so this is our static nonlinearity. And this loss behavior of electric motors can be like really complex, you need a lot of expert knowledge in order to describe it well. But if you know, okay, current and speed will have any impact on the losses, that could be already quite a good approach without the need of having so much input um, knowledge. With this A and N, we get then U bar. So U bar basically uh, relates to the power losses, and this can be then given into x dot of hat is a times x hat of t plus b times u bar of t, so into a dynamic representation of the uh, thermal behavior, this would be then x hat, and of course this needs to be fed back for our simulation because the temperature, so x of t is here the temperature of our DC motor, will also influence the loss behavior. The hotter the motor normally also the more losses the motor will um, generate. Okay, so a classical representation of a Hammerstein approach with also some state feedback rendering that actually a nonlinear uh, system with parameter variant impacts. However, we can also put it into the Hammerstein model class. And now I have prepared some example code in order to model this behavior, the thermal behavior based on data. Okay. Um, so what do we see here in this notebook? We actually see just like some bunch of equations uh, with the inputs which we can observe the load current I of t and the speed of the motor N of t. Here is our ground truth uh, loss uh, formula of the DC motor which is already simplified. Um, the loss behavior is normally much more complex. We have some copper losses, we have some iron losses. So specific details are here not so important. The important thing is that we can see basically some nonlinear operations on our input uh, variables, which is rendering this input side into the thermal behavior of the DC motor nonlinear. The actual thermal dynamics, so X of T is the scalar temperature, or lumped temperature of this DC motor. Uh, is then represented again by a linear ODE. So here we have the linear ODE behavior. Um, the motor is cooled using some cool ambient air, and RTH and CTH are the um, thermal resistance and the thermal capacitance of this uh, electric DC motor. And here PV is our loss input, which we will approximate on the following using an artificial neural network. So linear dynamics, Nonlinear input, Hammerstein approach, which we can model using data using a neural ordinary differential approach. But first, of course, we need to simulate that and generate some ground truth data as usual. So uh, we set up our 
nonlinear ODE, so linear ODE with nonlinear inputs. We set up the um, input values, so i, n, and theta a of t will be represented as just functions over time, which we can put as a continuous function into our um, DC motor temperature behavior. This parameter p is then just a tuple of some parameters uh, and the input data of our nonlinear ODE. Then we define our ODE problem using the normal toolboxes, add some mild measurement noise on it, and what we get, starting from room temperature, so from a pre-cooled motor, we get this thermal behavior, which is just arbitrary and basically just says that over a time of a couple of hundreds of seconds, the motor will basically uh, heat up up to 125 degrees Celsius, and due to changing load conditions with respect to the current and respect to the motor speed, we can basically see some um, dynamics here, or harmonics uh, also on the temperature. And our objective is now using a neural Hammerstein approach, so to speak, in order to represent this um, measured behavior using a data-driven approach. So how do we do that? Um, so we, of course, have structural knowledge, so we assume now that we know that the ODE looks in this fashion, so we assume that we know A and B, which are scalars in this case. However, we assume that we do not know the specific values of CTH and RTH, right? So we need to also identify them. So that means we know the structure of A and the structure of B, but we do not know the parameters. So this makes the task even a little bit harder. And of course, we do not know the loss behavior because we assume that we are not experts in this field of uh, electrical motors. So that means that we need to represent this loss behavior using our observed data and an artificial neural network, okay? So therefore, we will optimize the parameters of this neural network and we will optimize these two ODE parameters, CTH and RTH. These are our optimization variables in this example. Okay, so we set up our training loop here with some simulation parameters as usual, and then we set up our um, neural network for the loss behavior. How do we do that? We utilize three inputs, which is the motor current, the motor speed, and the temperature uh, of the drive itself. And the output uh, is a very small neural network, is just scalar because we have just one loss uh, value as the output. Here we use specifically the sigmoid activation function, which is limited between zero and one, because physically losses, power losses, can be only positive. So this is already an, a smart choice of the activation function by incorporating some pre-knowledge because we know that this loss behavior cannot generate negative losses, which would basically lead to a cooling of the motor, which does not make any sense because losses, so dissipation of energy into heat, will heat up the motor. So these losses need to be positive, which is represented here by this sigmoid activation at the output layer. Very nice. Okay, um, then we do a very mild um, normalization uh, of our input um, data, such that it's basically limited between minus one and one, in order to be able to bring decently valued inputs into this A and N. And uh, we will then also scale the normalized power losses using a scaling factor, as we will see just in a second. Okay, so what do we see here? We see some initial guesses on CTH and RTH and also some scaling factor on the losses, which is 5,000, so 5,000 watts. Because the output of our ANN, as I said, is limited between zero and one. So if we scale that, at the output layer with 5,000, that would mean that we can represent losses up to five kilowatts. So basically, normalization at the beginning, maybe I can put that here, so we have some normalization with respect to our inputs, U of T, and here would be also some denormalization. which I have not shown so far here into this sketch. Okay, then we set up our training ODE. So we unpack the parameter vector P, which has 
basically more than just the A and N parameters because we also want to optimize for the two parameters of the ODE itself. Uh, here's our loss representation, which is just the evaluation of the artificial neural network with the temperature input, the uh, loading input of the current, and speed and current as inputs. Here's the ODE representation where we assume the structural knowledge without the specific um, yeah, the specific values of CTH and RTH because we also want to optimize them during the optimization loop. Here we set up our ODE problem of the training loop. Here we have standard prediction and loss function, which is just the MSE of our estimated temperature and the target temperature. Here we set up our optimization loop using optimization.jl uh, with um, automatic uh, differentiation using Psygoat in the backward mode. Uh, and then we have here like a um, loss callback for uh, observing the training loop, not so important. And then we start everything again with the ADEM solver. And what we can see here, actually we start with very high values of the uh, identification loss, so that means our initial model because we have just set some arbitrary initial parameters, especially here for this neural network, uh, is completely off. But then over time, actually, uh, we converge quite quickly, quite nicely. The numbers go down and down and down and down. And after 1,000 episodes, we have actually reached the steady state in terms of the optimization objective. And then if we plot the result of the measured and the predicted temperature, we can actually see that this node Hammerstein approach has perfectly well uh, fitted the ground truth measure temperature. We can even see here that we actually seem to have um, chosen a, a decent size of the A and N for this nonlinear input because we can see that um, the noise, uh, the greenish noise which we have added to the measurements, that this is not learned by heart, but the model is basically just canceling out the noise impact, which is actually exactly what we want to see. We want to see a model which is insensitive to noise. So what is the key takeaway message of this example? That is that in contrast to the previous uh, approach where we utilized a neural ordinary differential model, that due to uh, structural pre-knowledge or a light structural pre-knowledge, we are now able to set up a nonlinear model which is working very well and also the optimization loop worked very well without any issues, nice convergence and so on. Therefore, these hybrid models, also called sometimes gray box models, where I assume some known dynamics and some unknown nonlinearities normally in practice work very well in order to design identification tool change which can lead to quick and well results. We will deepen our investigations on other neural ordinary differential uh, equation variants, modeling variants using data in the subsequent videos. I thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to meeting you in the next videos. Thank you.